people, happy Friday, and welcome to the first episode of Friday Sews for 2022. This is my first video of the year, so happy new year, and I hope your year has gotten off to a great start. So today I'm going to tell you about what I've been up to, including a little bit of a life update, and uh, also my upcoming plans. So let's get into it. Feel free to use the chapters at the scroll bar um, or the timestamps time stamps in the description box below to skip around to whatever part interests you the most. So let me update you where we last left off. Um, my last video was 27 days ago. It was the last day of Vlogmas. And in that video, I finished up and showed you my festive Christmas McCall's 7974. And I signed off for the year on a high. I was feeling good, feeling festive. And you guys, do I have an update for you on what happened after that? Um, you're not gonna believe it. Maybe you will believe it, but let me set the scene for you. So I am wearing the dress for Christmas Eve dinner. It's just me and my husband this year. Um, we eat dinner, I put the dress on, or I put the dress on, then we eat dinner. We eat in like 15 minutes because it's just us. And then I get up to go change into my Christmas Pattern Scout comfy lounge set that I also made in Vlogmas um, so that I can watch a Christmas movie and relax. And so I'm hanging up the dress and I see this. It just literally disintegrated while I was eating dinner in like 15 minutes the first time I wore it. It just shredded. It just shredded on my body. Thankfully I was at home and so I wasn't in front of anyone where it could like be embarrassing. But yeah, um, I could not believe it. Um, but I actually also could believe it. I wasn't completely surprised. I mentioned at some point while I was making it during Vlogmas that I was really fighting with the fabric, fraying um, really badly. And I think the fabric won this fight. So I, I know why though. I made a fatal flaw that contributed to why this happened. Basically, I didn't finish the raw edges of this seam. Well, actually I did serge them originally, but I felt like the serger stitches were really bulky for the fabric um, and they were showing through um, to the right side. And so I didn't really like how the seam looked and I decided to trim it all off. And uh, I also decided to trim the seam to about a quarter of an inch just to further reduce the bulk. And I thought this might be okay since the midriff panel here is it's completely enclosed. It's lined on the inside. So the raw edges, they don't show at all. Um, but yeah, that was a huge mistake considering how much the fabric was fraying. So basically uh, this bodice piece just ended up pulling itself out of this midriff seam. Like the seam is totally intact and it just like pulled itself out and immediately frayed and then it just frayed up further. So yeah, that happened. Uh, I'm sure there's ways to finish the seam on the inside so that it's both stable and not bulky, but like at this point I'm over it. Like I don't even care. I don't even want to know. I am slightly traumatized by this crepe back satin fabric and I definitely think it's going to be a while before I attempt any sort of satin fabric or like frayy fabric. So anyways, I was feeling pretty dejected at the time because this is literally the first thing that I've ever made that's actually fallen apart on me like the first time I wore it. And it's really a shame because it is a beautiful dress and I spent a lot of time on it and I still really love it, but you know, what are you gonna do, right? So um, I'll probably, I'll keep it around in my closet. Maybe I'll figure out how to fix it someday or like refashion it or do something like that with it. But anyways, yeah. That's a 2021 problem. So let's just leave it there and let's move on to 2022 and not give it a second thought. So after Vlogmas uh, and that whole debacle, I took a huge break from sewing for the holidays and for the first couple weeks of 2022, I just totally lost my sojo. I did not want to think about sewing. I didn't want to look at my sewing machine. I didn't want to look at Instagram. I didn't want to watch any sewing YouTube. No offense to all my sewing YouTube friends. I love you guys, but like, I just couldn't even think about it. I just didn't want to think about it at all. 
and I was still finding little fluffs of red fabric all over the place, like red fabric dust all over the place. So I just sat on this couch here, uh, ate Christmas candy. I watched TV. I watched movies. I played the Nintendo Switch my sister left me or let me borrow. We played a bunch of Mario Galaxy. It was really fun. So yeah, I just sat on the couch for like weeks, 27 days since my last video basically. And um, then finally last weekend, I made my first project of 2022. I made the Tsuti Monroe turtleneck pattern. I'm wearing it here. It is a free pattern. It's really popular. There's many versions floating around on social media. Um, it comes in three size ranges, one, two, and three. Size one is like extra, extra small through small. Size two is small through small, medium, large, and size three is large, extra large extra extra large so the side range the bust range is like 32 to 44 so kind of limited but let me show you the top while I talk about it so that you can see what I'm talking about uh, I made the size 3 which is the largest size my bust measure is 42 inches so I fit right in the middle of that size range um, there's a lot of ease built into the pattern the finished measurements for the size 3 is 53 inches around the body so that is about 11 inches of ease through um, the bodice. Um, so it's a very loose fitting, very boxy style turtleneck. I made it out of this charcoal gray and white striped cotton jersey blend knit from Girl Charlie. It was $5.60 a yard. Um, there were two things I came across when I was initially researching this pattern. Number one, people were talking about the neckband being too tight and even the pattern itself suggested making up the neckband and checking to make sure it would fit over your head. So I made sure to do that and sure enough, it did not fit over my head. Luckily, the pattern has instructions included for how to increase the neckband by two inches. So I followed those instructions. It was really, really easy. And then it fit fine, so that was good. The other thing that I saw people were talking about were the arms being too tight for them. And so I was going to try and measure the pattern to make sure that it would fit over uh, my bicep, but then I forgot and I ended up just cutting out the whole thing without even thinking about it. Um, but I wasn't really too worried about um, that or any other fitting issues because the fabric was so inexpensive. I kind of just consider it a wearable muslin. I thought I'd just make it up and go from there. So. On the topic of fitting, not to get completely off topic here, but after making the everything I made in 2021 video and seeing everything that I made on at the same time, I felt, let's say, a renewed motivation to keep really honing in on fit this year and really trying to like navigate the world of pattern fit and alterations as the noob that I am. So let's briefly talk about the fit here. And like I say every time, I am so new to this and it's still so hard for me to analyze fit and like translate that into what needs to be done or changed to a pattern. Um, but anyways, we can try it together and see what we come up with. So if you're not interested in this part, you can fast forward. Um, so anyways, like I said, many people mentioned the arms being super tight on them. And yes, the arms are super tight. The fabric I used is only about a 30% stretch, so it doesn't have a huge amount of give to move my arms. I think if you used a stretchier fabric, it might change how the tightness feels and it might not be much of a problem, but in a fabric with this amount of stretch, I think maybe like an inch or so wouldn't really hurt through the arms. Um, the other thing that I am noticing here is that the hem hangs slightly higher in the back than the front. It does it hang slightly unevenly. So I thought that because this is a drop shoulder top, um, my broad shoulder situation may just kind of work itself out. Sometimes I think that happens, but I think what this is telling me is that I probably need a little bit more room across the back. Either that or I totally cut the hems uneven, which is an actual possibility here because I was having trouble fitting my pattern on the amount of fabric that I had. So I might have cut it a little unevenly. But anyways, uh, for this version, like I said, I'm not too worried about the fit because it's so loose fitting that when I wear it, I'll probably do like a little French tuck in the front and that sort of pulls the back in a little bit and then you can't really notice it as much. And um yeah, I think it's like fine. So 
Anyways, those are two things that I would probably investigate further when I make this pattern again, not if, but when, because I really enjoyed making it. Uh, it could not have been easier to put together. I mean, I'm a slow sewer and it took maybe like an hour and a half to two hours like tops. It was dead easy, great payoff for a cute new turtleneck. It's a great basic, it rounds out the closet. So anyways, yeah, a great first project for 2022. I'm really happy with that, so. Okay, let's talk about upcoming plans. So I have three things that I wanna work on next. I think you've probably heard about all of them in past videos. So like I said, I want to focus on fit this year a little bit more. So I have two patterns I wanna work on muslining. Number one, the Style Arc Kenny Top. I love the big collar thing that it has going on and I feel like I better hurry up and make it because I feel like this is one of those things that goes out of style a little too fast. Um, so I wanna check the fit and then make it out of this Kaufman seven berry fabric with this um, navy blue and mustard floral print. And I think I'm going to make the ruffle around the collar in the same fabric instead of a contrasting fabric. I've seen many versions of this big collar top thing with a contrasting frill, but like I don't really need it to stand out quite that much. So I'm going to make it in the same fabric so it kind of all blends together, but still has the collar detail. Um, I've never sewn a style arc pattern, so I'm kind of excited to see what's in store for me because I've heard many things about it, one being that the instructions are very sparse. So we'll see how that goes. Next, I want to muslin the McCall's 7831 overalls dress. This pattern has been in my plan since fall. You've probably talk, heard about it. I've talked about it a few times. I wanna make a quick muslin and then make it up in this um, charcoal gray corduroy um, from Style Maker Fabrics. And then the third thing is also something that's been in the works for a while now, um, and that is the Kilo Wrap Jumpsuit. I've made the dress version, I love the dress version, and I was going to make the jumpsuit version back in October. Raise your hand if you were here at Vlogtober times. Um, but I didn't have enough fabric. Um, this burgundy sweatshirt fleece and it was still available on Girl Charlie so I ordered some more of it so that I could cut the whole thing out and you know things happen and here we are circling back to it in January so I think I mentioned way back then that I want to try and put a zipper into the back um, the jumpsuit version has a totally open back but it's the same pattern pieces as the dress, which you just sew a center back seam. So I think I can try to put a zipper in because I'm just like not trying to rock the whole open back thing right now. Like my back will get cold. So anyways, those are the three things that I want to work on. And if my past performance is any indication of my future performance, I'll probably be done with these things probably at the beginning of summer. Just kidding. I hope not. Let's not do that. So anyways, that is all I have for you for this episode of Friday Sews. Thank you as always to Jen from Today Engine Sewing Room for starting the hashtag Friday Sews. She's the queen of Friday Sews and we wouldn't be here without her. I'm so happy to be part of this sewing community here on YouTube and excited to continue being a part of it in 2022. So make sure to check out all the other Friday Sewers by typing in hashtag Friday Sews into your search bar. I like to sort by most recent so I can try and keep up with everyone in real time. And I hope you have a great weekend. I hope you have some fun sewing plans for yourself. Let me know what your first project of 2022 was. Have you done a project yet in 2022? So anyways, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.